That is the face of pure evil. Sure is. Um, it seems like he has resigned to his fate. So this is a Spencer hearing, which is an additional opportunity for the defense to put on evidence of mitigating factors to not put him on death row. It is unlikely that a judge will overturn a juror's uh, discretion and decision to sentence him to death based on the fact that that jury was also the one that found him guilty. However, there is a little crinkle in Florida law. The, he was sentenced to death by the jury in 2013. At that time, it wasn't required to have a unanimous mm -hmm. jury vote. In 2017, Florida law changed, and now it is required to have a unanimous jury verdict to sentence someone to death. In this case, I don't know if it was a unanimous jury or not, but the facts are so bad and so it egregious. It was, by the way. It was a unanimous jury. Okay, so I don't see the judge overturning what the jurors have done. It is just such an awful case, and he doesn't even want to put on any testimony to the no, contrary. This it's out of a movie, and it was a really fast verdict as well um, that the jurors came down with. And what's what's really interesting is they have recordings um, of the mother in the in the jail telling him that she, he can't keep his mouth shut. He, you know, leave it to the mom, and Golda. She's, <laughs> she's on the jail recordings, and, reaming out but, her son. We heard it there. And he made it worse for himself by taking the stand. He, he by him taking the stand, I think he thought he could explain himself to the jury in some way, but he just looked like more of a idiot. idiot. Exactly. I mean, this guy I thought mean, he was pretty slick. Yeah. Uh, he thought he could he, pull one he, over us all, I, I guess. I think he thinks, you know, he's a doctor. So failed. He, a failed doctor. Yeah. But he thought he could be smart enough to wiggle his way out of this one, just like he thought he could be smart enough to hire a hitman to kill off those in his way. And it didn't work out too well for him in this case. It's that was the bombshell yes, yes that we just got. With, with some assumptions. And this was the state's witness. So that witness is paid by the prosecution to be there to have an opinion that would support the prosecution's case. So that was, a, if the jury's paying attention, that was a very skilled cross-examination. And if you were watching closely, he was dodging the answer. He kept dodging. He she, didn't want to say yes. <laughs> she kept having to rephrase it and re-ask it until he, we, we got that, whoa, uh, yes. And then he had to follow up by saying, well, assuming everything else you just said is right. But the yes, which means she was more valuable to tax MacGyver alive due to the cash flow and his access to her cash flow than dead. Because dead meant the funds had to go to pay liabilities, funds were frozen, he didn't have access to it. He didn't have access to, to it. it right away. He was an executor of, his, of the estate, which means he, he, he could execute it and be in control of it. But he had obligations. Obligations, and it didn't give him rights to just spend it as if it was his own money. So Carissa, that was key. Very uh, the state spent hours and hours on direct examination. It was draconian and it was extreme. It was tiring. It was exhausting. We we didn't really get anywhere. And then the, the defense. <laughs> if I'm a juror, I'm in, like falling yeah, asleep. And yeah, and then the defense on cross examination in a very short period of time. Right. Got him to admit that she was more valuable alive than dead. That her but cash flow was I more valuable. Cash flow.